Hello everyone, my name is Bernardo Santos and I'm going to present the work Anomaly Detection in Cellular IoT with Machine Learning, done with Imran Khan, Bruno Zogovic, Professor Boning Feng, Van Tuan Du, Niels Jaco, and Professor Dr. Tan Van Do. For this presentation, we will first establish the motivation as to why this work is relevant and then present the needed related topics. After, we will showcase our proposed solution, going through the required steps, components, and recommendations given the established premises. Following it, we present the obtained results of our experiment and make an evaluation of them. Finally, we've established some key observations from our work and discuss briefly about the needed future work. So, if we think about what drives the research in this area, we can see that nowadays, millions of IoT devices are connected worldwide to make our daily lives easier, especially when we think about the healthcare sector. It comes to a point given by a prediction from Ericsson, 29 billion overall cellular devices will be online and connected by 2025, of which 18 billion will be IoT. However, a majority of these devices contain vulnerabilities such as weak passwords and are very susceptible to aggressive or extreme attacks. As we can see from the Harbor Security Report made in 2016, 65% of the accounted attacks to this type of device were some type of denial of service. As such, we must come up with measures that allow us to protect them from such exploits. Hence, our objective is to analyze different machine learning techniques that can help detect or even predict an upcoming exploit that is targeting IoT devices connected to the cellular network. So, what does this work encompasses? I have mentioned it already in the beginning, but allow me to give a brief overview. Internet of Things, or IoT, is described as a network to connect anything with internet-based protocols through information sensing equipments to conduct information exchange. Some IoT-based applications and services are related to smart homes and cities, e-health, crop and energy consumption monitoring, intelligent transportation, among others, which provide new capabilities, opportunities, and everyday solutions for businesses, but also to consumers and end users. You may wonder as to why IoT security has become such an important topic, even within healthcare. Allow me to present the following issues that we are facing when dealing with current IoT devices. There is no ubiquitous notion of the security mechanisms needed to properly protect these devices. Manufacturers only provide the basic ones and consumers don't know how to properly configure or activate them. Given the diversity of IoT equipment and manufacturers, there is no standard or common ground that could satisfy the needed security requirements for this type of device. As far as privacy goes, due to the lack of security mechanisms, sensitive information coming from IoT devices can be compromised. Some special devices, like the ones used in healthcare, are not properly maintained or attended enough when it comes to a security perspective. And finally, as we have now more and more IoT devices connected through cellular, they are becoming exposed to a different set of threats compared to a fixed network. This is a lot to think about, so for the purpose of this work, we are focusing on DDoS attacks, which stands for Distributed Denial of Service. Simply put, in order to shut down or compromise certain resources in the network, which in this case are the IoT devices, once an attacker successfully finds an exploit, it will launch an attack through multiple endpoints in multiple locations exhausting the device's resources to process all the requests. In critical IoT solutions, shutting down certain devices may lead to a huge compromise and various types of unnecessary costs. There are two types of DDoS attacks. One is direct, in which the attacker aims directly to the target, and the other is indirect, in which the attacker uses other machines in between its way to the target. 
One way to address this type of attack, in the sense of minimizing or mitigating its overall impact in an IoT solution and on a cellular network, is by doing traffic analysis and use machine learning algorithms, focusing on anomaly detection, an approach supported in various related works. As such, for the purpose of this work, we have used datasets for normal traffic and DDoS traffic and take a supervised learning approach as we are training the algorithms to recognize and classify anomalies based on known events. Of the various available algorithms, we have chosen the following, supported by existing works, and we will compare each outcome given the scenarios established further on. K nearest neighbors, or KNN. Decision tree. Support vector machines, or SVM. Naive base classifier. And finally, logistic regression. You may wonder as to how we are putting everything together. To that end, allow me to present our proposed solution. Our approach goes threefold, starting with the data collection, where we generate or use separate data sets, one containing normal traffic and the other containing a DDoS event. Next, we proceed to feature extraction and selection, meaning that we focus on the parameters that can better indicate the events, or in this case, various anomalies that we're trying to detect. Finally, we will have those datasets labeled so that the used machine learning algorithms are properly trained. For the normal traffic dataset, we had mobile devices like smartphones and Raspberry Pi with cellular IoT boards connected to Wi-Fi to a mobile gateway. This gateway has a programmable SIM card that allows to connect to the cellular network established in our secure 5G for IoT lab in the Oslo Metropolitan University, using consumer available hardware and open source software. For the DDoS traffic dataset, we used an outsourced dataset made by the Canadian Institute of Cybersecurity in the University of New Brunswick. We have selected this dataset because it provides a comprehensive analysis on various types of DDoS attacks. Due to time constraints, especially at the end stages of this work with the COVID-19 pandemic, we only worked with the tcp sin protocol data. In order to be able to properly distinguish and classify normal from DDoS traffic, based on literature review done for this work, we have chosen a set of features or parameters to help the machine learning training process. To that end, protocol type, source and destination IP, and also packet time interval and length have been selected for our set under the following thresholds. First, TCP packet lengths under 100 bytes will be considered an anomaly, while the second threshold will classify the packets between 50 and 70 bytes and between 160 and 180 bytes as anomalies as well. And before using the data to train the machine learning algorithms, the following preparations must be done. The removal of missing or null entries, as it is very difficult to handle them because it could create incorrect predictions in any model. Given the different types of data that both datasets provide, some standardization between them must be applied. We also need to label the data accordingly to our defined thresholds. The normal traffic will be labeled as 0, and if it fits the thresholds, it will be labeled as 1. Finally, the datasets are split on a 70-30 ratio, being the majority for training purposes and the rest for testing. Now that we've dealt with the traffic data processing, allow me to present a summary of the proposed solution, which is illustrated in this figure. IoT devices and other cellular devices are connected to the network and generate traffic accordingly. As the data is being processed, if it detects an anomaly coming from a certain device, and furthermore, if it has been validated as a potential attack, the device will be classified as compromised. 
Its identifiers will be relayed to the network's identity management system, where it will blacklist the device, leading to a temporary or a permanent block from the network. Moving on to the results and evaluation of this work. For reference, the accuracy results soon presented relate to how well each classifier or algorithm was trained and the precision results relate to the rate of correctly classified true positive and true negative results by each algorithm, meaning how well were they able to detect true normal traffic and true anomalies in the traffic. For the first threshold for the normal traffic, although all machine learning algorithms had fair performance metrics with an average of 81% for precision and 86% in accuracy, only SVM produced the expected behavior as it classified all traffic as normal. For the DDoS traffic, we've obtained an average of 98% for precision and 97% in accuracy. However, SVM was not able to detect any anomalies, contrary to the rest of the algorithms. For KNN, we were able to detect two separate anomaly instances with the number of neighbors going to 30, which was the closest we got to the actual event portrayed in the provided dataset. For the second threshold, with the normal traffic, we've obtained an average of 83% for precision and 78% in accuracy. Here, the naive base was the outlier as it detected possible anomalies while other classifiers produced the expected behavior. However, for the DDoS traffic, we've obtained an average of 99% for precision and 98% in accuracy, and all algorithms behave as expected, being the only difference the way that the anomaly instances were detected. For instance, some detect an anomaly occurrence for a longer period than others. From the results, we were able to determine that for the chosen scenarios, KNN is the overall best classifier. Given the used thresholds, the rest of the classifiers have shown to be too sensitive, hence having different outcomes from what was expected. To address this, the establishment of more robust thresholds that are more adequate to our scenarios are needed in order to provide more reliable results. As a reminder, this is an early stage work regarding these topics, and in a real-life situation and for further validation, these classifier results are forwarded to the operator security expert team. After analysis, it is up to them on how to proceed regarding compromised devices detected in the network. So in conclusion, We've presented a solution to minimize or mitigate the impact of a potential DDoS attack on IoT devices in a cellular network using machine learning algorithms for traffic anomaly detection. We've went through the necessary steps to deploy such solution and put it into test with known classifiers such as KNN, SVM, and others by using a feature set and threshold supported by literature review and we analyze their performance as to detect possible attacks. Although the obtained results show promise, more studies need to be done as to provide a more robust tool. In those future studies, it is important to focus on more attacks and go beyond DDoS and flood attacks, for instance with zero-day attacks, meaning that we need to experiment with new feature or parameter sets and deal with more mobile or cellular specific protocols like PDCP, GTP, NAS, among others. Also, we need to use other learning algorithms such as neural networks so that the solution provides a more automated approach. In the end, our aim is to provide a helping tool to telecom operators to deal with potential attacks targeting IoT devices as they will be the lifeline for various IoT solutions, especially when we think about healthcare. Thank you for your time. Please visit our website to follow up on our work and contact us if you have questions. I wish you all a very pleasant day.